2022 Subaru Forester Wilderness Edition. Is this North American exclusive worth your hard earned cash? Today, Strider and I are gonna find out. <laughs> Hey guys, stay to the end so I can answer your questions on the Forester Wilderness. Also, if you're new to the channel, my name's Kirk. I talk about Japanese and Korean cars. Subscribe if you're not. Let's get into it. For 2022, Subaru has given us not only the Outback Wilderness, but now we have the Forester Wilderness. I would not be surprised if we see Crosstrek Wilderness, etc., going forward. Even, even the Ascent is a possibility. Let's talk about some of the design cues that are a little bit different on this more outdoorsy, off-road model the first thing you're going to notice is the immense amount of like matte black plastic on the vehicle and some people hate it some people are going to not think twice about it to me what catches my eye is going to be this little decal on top that's supposed to reduce the reflections when you're off-roading I, I think it looks pretty cool and makes the wilderness stand out just from that unique hood decal now if we look at the wheels here we have a specific yokohama geolander off-roading tires that has a tread that goes around uh, and wraps around the sidewall a little bit 225 by 60s on the 17 inch wheels i do really like the five spoke wheels on the wilderness model and gosh we're going to have a lot of instances guys where you're going to see wilderness sprinkled throughout the vehicle especially on the inside but of course the, the badge feels good it has a nice gloss to it it's it's pretty cool and the yellow is what they're calling anodized yellow um, I, it looks gold to me, a little bit sparkly gold, so whatever you guys want to call it. From the side, you might be able to notice the extra half inch of ground clearance. We have 9.2 inches with the Gold Forester logo at the bottom. We have uh, different springs for the suspension to give it the extra ride height. On the top though, we have some roof rails, which of course have the anodized yellow as well, and they actually support 800 pounds compared to uh, the 200 pounds on the stock. Forester. Now coming around to the back, we have some more matte black plastic, but it's actually a little bit texturized here with some dimples that goes around the spoiler as well. And you're going to have the blacked out Subaru all wheel drive as well as the Forester logo here and the Wilderness logo as well. And we have a nice real tip there. No fake tips here on the Subaru Forester. Getting in the back, we have this all weather mat here. Tons of cargo space. Uh, in the Forester, it's just a big box on the inside. So of course in the back here behind the second row, we're gonna have tons of space. An extra subwoofer back here, that sounds pretty good with the Harman Kardon system. You just press this button, it easily folds down the seats. Nice that we have a tonneau cover here to hide your belongings. Underneath, thankfully, we have a spare tire. So we really appreciate that Subaru, especially if you're gonna be off-roading. This is a full-size spare. You can see the Geolander badge on the sidewall there. There's nothing different underneath the hood of this specific Wilderness Edition of the Forester. We still have the naturally aspirated two and a half liter boxer four cylinder with a little over 180 horsepower and a little under 180 pound feet of torque mated to a CVT. But what is unique about this CVT is that they added an additional transmission cooler. So now not only can it tow double the amount of the normal Forester at 3000 pounds, it can probably handle sustained off-roading a little bit better because that transmission is now cooled. But no turbos available for the Forester, no hybrids available. What you have is this engine and we'll talk about how this combination with the engine and CVT perform on the road here in a little bit. Just like the outside of the Forester wilderness on the inside of this wilderness edition you're going to be met with more anodized yellow aka gold we have it around the x mode shifter where you can select dirt and snow and deep snow and mud uh, you have it around the shift boot as well as the shifter you have it on the steering wheel you have gold stitching on the steering wheel you have gold stitching on the armrest area you have the subaru wilderness tag on the door not only in the back door as well you also have subaru wilderness sprinkled and stamped into the headrest. We also have tags in the middle of the front chairs. And oh yeah, they're on the floor mats as well. Like I could keep going. There's a ton of special attention given to the wilderness package here. But if we step back and look at the design of this more in a typical Forester uh, manner, we have three screens here, one small four inch screen uh, MID between the analog gauges. And by the way, the tachometer has Subaru Wilderness inside of it as well with the gold surrounds of the analog gauges. We have an additional MID up here at the top that you can select more information on it. And to control the MID on the top of the center stack, you press the info button that cycles through a bunch of different information on there. Uh, and then to control the MID behind the steering wheel, there are these buttons behind the steering wheel, kind of like almost like the paddle shifters, which you do actually have paddle shifters, which I'm never going to use because, you know, CVT 
life. We actually have some sport mode buttons on the bottom right of the steering wheel. The right hand side of the steering wheel is going to have your safety features like radar cruise control and lane cape on the left hand side are going to be your presets, the volume, the source, etc. We do have adaptive headlights in here and you can actually switch it off with this SRH button here on the left hand side. You also have a stop start feature over here that you can disable and then blind spot monitor etc with some more controls on the left hand side. As typical modern car fashion we do have glossy black around the uh, cooling and heating controls which I really like in here. It does have heated seats that are down by the X mode toggle and then we also have a tuning knob. Thank you Subaru for including the tuning knob. Gotta, gotta throw it out there for you guys. The screen is fairly small but it is very easy to get to and easy to work with. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are in here. You have to plug it in though. It's not wireless. Uh, volume knob. Whenever you change the volume it has to tell you on the screen. It overrides everything else on the screen to tell you if you're raising or lowering the volume. It's a bit silly but that's what Subaru does. And you actually have a CD player in here. Long live the CDs, right? The sunroof in here is massive. It's like, I would say just a little bit smaller than what you would consider a panorama panoramic roof, but it gets the job done and brings a ton of extra light here into the cabin. Now getting in the back seat of the wilderness, I have this seat pushed all the way back because Strider likes to sit on the floor up front. So anyways, I'm six foot one. And my knees aren't even touching with this seat pulled all the way back. It's a manual passenger seat, by the way. We do have a ton of matte pocket goodness back here. We also have USBs in the middle, two USB-As. There are no USB-Cs in this car, so two up front, two in the back here. Luckily, we have vents in the back. Uh, we're reminded that we're in the wilderness edition by the gold stitching, not only in the back of the seat, but on uh, the door, the back of the door, the side of the door back here. Folding down the armrest gives us a couple more cup holders, and I have a good view of the oversized sunroof in here. As we pull out of the review area, we do have a front-facing camera. I, we don't have a 360 camera, so you have two cameras instead of four, and you know, there's both of them. You can see front and back at the same time. So I guess that's definitely a benefit if you're off-roading to have that extra camera on the front and the rear of the vehicle, but it's not quite as functional as a 360 camera would be. And this vehicle, I'm just gonna go kind of fast here because this is off-road, you know? Why not? It handles it really well. I just feel like I'm gliding over this and it's not that smooth. So that's kind of what you would expect from a Subaru. And I'm not even going to do like a traditional zero to 60. It's probably going to be around like nine seconds. I'm just going to stop here. I'm going to put it into this sport mode, SI drive and go. Kind of scared Tr Strider a bit. I should have told him <laughs> to hold on. But yeah, it just feels like um, a CVT that with fake gears. And there's 60, so nothing crazy. Uh, <laughs> it's not fast, but in normal everyday driving, I do feel like this vehicle keeps up with traffic really well. Come on to the brakes at this dead end sign and hard. And this is what's really surprised me about uh, the Forester Wilderness is that it has really good road manners. And that's something I wasn't expecting. I was expecting maybe a, a rougher ride. I was expecting not that great of a brake feel and maybe kind of numb steering and in fact the opposite is true it is very nimble it, you do have a good amount of body roll but it's supposed to be a tiny bit stiffer than the standard forester but it is it does start turn in really quickly which i was not expecting for this big boxy suv so maybe oh he's he just nailed the gopro i think it's still recording but the symmetrical all-wheel drive system is definitely what people love subaru for and for its reliability and i do feel like not only that you're getting with this package but the wilderness drives so well on the streets the brake feel is nice and linear and strong super predictable um, the start stop system is okay it's it's a little bit jarring but i've tested that are much worse because it's a cvt it's very smooth almost like electric car smooth because you don't feel the shifting of the gears <laughs> we all know the flip side to the cvt is that when you want performance it's very drony and there's not a lot of power there at least with this boxer four cylinder you know it is pretty responsive and it does feel like it downshifts like a traditional automatic transmission when i punch it and punch <laughs> it sounds like it's downshifting but then it just stays at you know peak power which is probably around 5500 rpm or so now i'm up to speed going around 60 miles an hour road noise is completely like non-existent i don't hear or feel anything from the road 
and that's what really that's one of the most surprising things about this vehicle is that the ride quality is luxury level like it's better it's way better ride quality i'm not saying handling because it doesn't come close to the, the lexus nx f sport that i drove last week but in terms of just like overall comfort when you're cruising this suspension and the tires and whatever subaru has done it feels like an old school luxury ride a little bit floaty no sound coming from the road and it's very soft and comfortable and these seats they don't support you that much but i wouldn't expect them to the bolstering's pretty uh, relaxed on it but the seats overall are pretty soft i do feel like i'm kind of sitting on top of the seat and the overall visibility with these massive windows on the forester that's got to be also one of the biggest selling features of this vehicle not only do you sit up high and extra high because of the added ride height on this wilderness edition you just have so much sunlight coming in whether it's from the sunroof or the massive windshield or the large square um you know passenger windows the only thing i can think of that comes similar to this in terms of how much light it brings in is like the lexus gx or the toyota 4runner just old school suv massive windows but this vehicle feels more like a car when you drive but can stop mentioning how good this car feels on the road because we probably need to take it off-road to see what this vehicle is really capable of and no i don't have mountains here in florida um, there are swamps which is really dangerous i'm not going to risk my life because i get stranded alligators bears and cougars technically the full florida panther it's the same thing it's kind of like a mountain lion but we don't have mountains anyways Ooh, that sand you just kind of melt through the sand here oh yeah this is pretty cool i'm gonna get in the, the throttle a little bit and it just plows right through it so <laughs> this is pretty kind of, this is fun i'll just say that i'm just like keeping my speed here going about 25 miles an hour it oh a little a little a little squirrely there uh <laughs> we're going around the turn maybe we can get the back end out a little bit not really not really <laughs> i don't know where i'm going but this is pretty cool i could probably do you know some some donuts in here maybe i don't know I'm not an off-roading expert, especially when it comes to sand. Like, I don't know if I could actually do donuts back here, but I'm really interested to see where this sand road leads me to. Hopefully there's not a bunch of people out here saying like, hey, what are you doing? But it just keeps going. So this is pretty cool off-roading uh, terrain here. And hopefully there's nothing around this corner here to blindside me. Uh, when I come out but it says no trespassing and there's some like farm equipment back there so I'm just gonna back up and go the way I came okay we found a, a little bit of grass here to off-road in I'm not even going to put it into X drive or anything because it should handle this no problem and this is like you know as I'm going through some of these tall grasses like this is why there's so much like plastic cladding around the vehicle because it's durable and it doesn't show scratches like paint does so as i'm plowing through this deep grass like i don't feel bad because i know that it has so much black plastic non-shiny cladding everywhere to protect it from the environment it's like uh here we go we're just gonna go through this really tall stuff as well and it's just it sounds so bad going underneath the vehicle and that's probably a, a big aftermarket thing is underbody cladding which i'm sure this vehicle could have some additional aftermarket underbody cladding to help it out a bit okay we're going we're going to go through the same spot again um but i think that this actually takes me out to a cement road if i remember from the nissan off-roading portion <laughs> No, yeah there it is nothing crazy so that's going to conclude my off-roading of the subaru forester wilderness lots of broken glass out here that's always concerning someone's been doing burnouts though this could be a good place to do burnouts so now that we have tires back on pavement here let's summarize the subaru forester wilderness now i haven't driven a forester in a really long time and we just look at the specs of subaru it doesn't tell the whole story the brake in here like that stop sign is completely faded i don't even know why there's a stop sign because that road is uh shut down anyways the vehicle has impressed me overall not with 
any like it, it's infotainment and technology is nothing special like its engine and transmission are definitely not anything special but the refinement of this vehicle is really impressive like it definitely feels like a japanese vehicle where everything fits together perfectly fit and finish is there the build quality is there um and when it comes to the driving mechanics of this vehicle it feels awesome on road especially off-road it handles it just fine but i haven't been driving it that much off-road as you guys just saw but on road this thing handles great for a tall crossover suv thing um, but the ride quality is just so smooth and brings a smile to my face yes you do have a little bit of wind noise at higher speeds but you really don't ever notice the road noise even with these more off-road focused tires super soft suspension it's damped so well you don't feel really anything in the road you just kind of feel like a magic carpet floating over things so strider do you think we should get a subaru no answer so we'll let the audiences i'm not going to get a subaru guys not anytime soon but this vehicle really has impressed me and i'm going to find a parking spot so i can get to your questions uh preferably a parking spot in the shade and this tesla's taking that parking spot should i try to like back in a little a little like pa parallel parking should we try it all right let's see what this camera is about I'm just gonna crank the wheel here around the burb let's see Oh, I cut it close. Is it too close? Almost too close. Almost too close. Hey, let's check out that front camera. There it is. Look at that. Hey, yo. That's a perfect, perfect parking the first time. I don't, it could have been the car, could have been the driver, but let's get to your questions. Adrian is asking when I take this over a CX-50. Well, I haven't driven the CX-50, so stay tuned, but I've heard and read about how the CX-50 is a kind of a rough riding vehicle, com the complete opposite nature of this car. So if the CX-50 is as rough as people are saying, I would take this probably every single time. No, the interior is not as nice, but the thing that matters a lot to me is ride quality and this vehicle hits it out of the park there. Uh, details regarding the hybrids. Well, I wish we got hybrids, unfortunately, we're still waiting. Maybe we'll see some sort of hybrid. I mean, Toyota has worked with like the Crosstrek uh, from Subaru to give us like that plug-in hybrid, but really it's been very quiet in terms of electrification from them other than the Solterra. So they might just go fully electric, guys. I don't know if they're gonna be doing big hybrids here. Suba Zealand asks about the new tune of the CVT. How is it for driving? Um, is it better than the normal one now that i'm in the wilderness and i had no issues with the cvt uh, if it's tuned differently than the normal one i don't know about that i didn't see that in the press release but it feels fine in here and i'm kind of used to subaru cvts at this point gets the job done it's not a performance thing it's a fuel economy thing and this thing does get pretty good gas mileage in the mid 20s cam gear the coolest thing about your 05 forester was a full-time synthetic symmetric all-wheel drive and yeah it's still really good here as i just owned that complete sand road uh, alan green is allowed inside if you drive on the highway you do have wind noise but the road noise is minimal even with these off-road tires i mentioned that next level journey entry and exit points parking lot entrances or even some off-road uh, hopefully i gave you enough off-road <laughs> at this point in time rafa yacht the body roll in your regular is quite bad and the steering and acceleration response is horrid i don't feel like the steering response is bad i actually quite like it in this vehicle it is light but it is accurate and it wants to turn in pretty quick um, the acceleration responses are good enough for me, I, given this is a CVT. And the body roll is not as bad in this because it has different springs. Some of you are saying it looks like a Pontiac Aztec. I think it looks a lot better than the Aztec, but I can see what you're talking about. Aaron's asking about the Harman Kardon sound system and if it's as good as the Lexus systems. Nowhere near as loud, it has more rattles. Uh, the sound is not nearly as dynamic. Um, the bass in here is okay, but it can't touch uh, uh, Mark Levinson, not even close. So I'd say it's average for its class. But that sums it up. Stride and I are going to head back home. I'll see you guys down below in your comments about the Forester Wilderness Edition. Crazy looks, but it is a really good driving car on road and off. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.